A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. At Philips MR, every step in the past 35 years has been a commitment to patient care. A wish to deliver optimum care. An aspiration to create meaningful impact. And of course, a vision to provide innovative solutions. But innovation is only possible when you challenge current practices. When you bring data, technology, and people together, seamlessly. Our journey would be impossible without the extensive collaborative work of our clinical partners, radiologists, scientists, and medical professionals. They are the backbone of our innovations. Without multiband sense, we wouldn't have been eligible to participate in the ABCD study. We've worked intensively with Philips for the past 10 years on new developments that make it easier to integrate MRI into a clinical practice. We really got the impression that Philips had their best engineers working on this development, and they're investing a lot of resources. Philips really works with us a lot to try to find out what we need as physicians and, and clinicians to take care of kids. The landscape of healthcare is ever changing, and so are the challenges it brings. From dealing with technology to meeting the increasing patient demands to deliver better care at lower costs. This continuous transformation in healthcare has brought major challenges. Between 2015 and 2050, the portion of the world's population that's older than 60 will nearly double. Globally, nearly one out of six deaths is due to cancer. The healthcare workforce is also challenged. The world is currently short of 7.2 million healthcare workers. This number will increase to 12.9 million by 2035. This means the workforce needs to maintain a high level of service with decreasing resources. At Philips, People have been the true inspiration and are the driving force of our innovations. We believe MR still has huge untapped potential. The potential to make an even bigger difference to healthcare. The potential to touch far more lives than it does today. That's why our next generation of innovation is built for a world where MR plays a greater role in supporting care providers to deliver better care for patients. It is designed to achieve a simpler, faster, and smarter path to a confident diagnosis, elevating the patient experience and, above all, patient care. This means redefining the value of imaging through meaningful innovation, leading to a revolutionary portfolio of next-generation MR. It delivers speed without sacrifice, every time, due to techniques like Vital Eye, an advanced patient sensing technology, you can always keep a caring eye on the patient. Breeze Workflow, a flexible, lightweight digital coil system. And Compressed Sense, speed done right every time. Dramatically improved patient experience and comfort, like the Inbore Connect immersive visual experience. And Confident Diagnosis, a new gradient architecture designed around the patient delivering a new perspective on clinical outcomes and research results. Meet the first ever digital broadband MR portfolio, a new family of systems. Ingenia, the next generation. Our journey doesn't end here. We will continue to touch the lives of people because there is always a way to make life better. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, customer, business partner, friends, and colleagues. I'm very delighted to welcome uh, all of you here tonight for this special event at the Opera. 
and I'm very happy to see a very, yeah, a very big crowd. Yeah? Nice to see you. But please be aware that it's not only the people that are in this room, but also this event is a live stream. And also the people that are on the streaming can pose questions to the expert that will be on stage after me. My name is Vincenzo Ventricelli. I'm the Philips Health System Leader for Middle East and Turkey. Um, and I will be your host, yeah? introducing the key moment of this, of this event. So we invited you at the opera. You have an host that is Italian. What could happen? Not singing, don't worry. I will not sing, I will not do that for you. I will spare this. But, um, yeah, we are at the opera. This is a very special, uh, special place. I think that opera in itself, if you look at this building, uh, merge and symbolize a combination of tradition and innovation. And there we think that Philips is very close to these things. So we're very proud about our tradition we are more than 125 years old company and very proud that we have made an impact on people's life for so long time. But at our DNA, we know that to make a meaningful impact, we need to continue to innovate. Yeah, that's why we are here tonight. And what is innovation? Yeah, innovation is a kind of magic. You see in our magician outside, something that we thought or the most thought was impossible, all of a sudden, is there, concrete, possible. Maybe not all of a sudden. Maybe it requires years of investment, of brain, of research. But still, when this happens, it's magic. For tonight, remember two numbers. 1,500, seven. 1,500, seven. So, today we will introduce you to the new era of diagnostic imaging. And in order to do that, I, will have, I have two special guests that will come on stage after me. I will introduce first the second guest, and this is Dr. Julie, that is an international established consultant cardiac radiologist who led the cardiac image service of the radiology department at Imperial College in London for several years. Dr. Julie consults at the moment in Switzerland at the Spital Aster, where he is leading the cardiac MRI and CT imaging service. And very importantly, he is currently responsible for the worldwide first clinical implementation of the 1.5T Ingenie Ambition MRI system. So extremely relevant for this audience and for what we want to bring to you today. But before the Dr. Julie, we will have another special guest. And for this, I don't need to read the card. This is a friend. This is um, a person that many of you already know, has led this organization for a long time, know this market, and now also know how the things happen, not only in the market, but also in the business. So I would like to invite on stage the global CEO for Philip Semar, Arian Rudder. Assalamu alaikum, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Vincenzo, thank you for the kind words. Uh, it feels very warm to stand here after everything you've said. Um, but I have to say, I, I feel also very good just to be back. And uh, I spent a few years here, came to Dubai for the first time in 2006. So it's a long time to get to know uh, the region. And you know, when I think about the region, it also brings back great memories of excitement, interesting customers to talk to. I see the ta Saudi table and many interactions with uh, Dr. Tafik, uh, as you can see, uh, but also here in Dubai, uh, uh, His Excellency Al Qutami, uh, who was uh, opening the annual radiology conference yesterday morning. And I know from all these exciting interactions that this is the place to be. This is where a lot happens. Um, this is where you are making history. And I'm looking forward uh, to making the news together with you tonight. Now, at some point, I was asked to help out in MR. 
And I have to tell you, I am equally excited to bring everything that I've learned here to the MR business. I think it's a very important business for you. I think it's a very important business for all the vendors. Um, so my excitement is there. And of course, being able to share so much news with you tonight also gives me a high level of confidence. So I hope you join me and Dr. Julie, by the way, in this, uh, in this next wave for MR. So let's get going. Um, one thing that you know from Philips, and I always say I'm a lucky person that I can get out of bed in the morning and I can think about touching people's lives. And you know that our goal for those following Philips uh, is to touch 3 billion lives uh, a year by 2025. And I don't want to do a quiz with you, but just give you a data point. We have 350 million people here in the Middle East. And according to the same principles that we apply here, we touch one third, one third of the population in the Middle East with our Phillips business. Right? I think it's quite an impressive, impressive number. Uh, at least it struck me when I saw that, uh, that data point. So I think that's um, uh, what motivates me and what motivates uh, Philips. Now, when I then think about what can, what can we do in MR? What can we do in MR to contribute to touching pe people's lives in a meaningful way? And I think one thing that we can do is listen very well to you, our customers. And we need to understand what it is you need. Right? Because we don't like to just innovate. We like to innovate for making a meaningful impact for you in your lives. And I have to tell you, today I met about five customers. Customers from Oman, customers from Kuwait, but also customers here in, uh, in the UAE. And every time I say, I think that the quadruple aim could be a short summary of what you need today. And I think everyone knows the triple aim or the quadruple aim. There are a few different definitions. But at the end of the day, it's all about cost. So doing more with less, in other words. Experience. Right? And when you think about experience, we often think about the patient. Um, but I also know that uh, it's very important to improve the experience of the staff. So the five customers that I talked to today also confirmed that. And of course, then it's all about outcomes. And, and you know that some countries even build their whole health system around outcomes. So that's very important. Now, if you put that together and I think, okay, let me assume that this is a reflection of what you are telling me, what you are telling us on a daily basis. Right? What can we do in MR? And what we said, what we can do in MR is help you with speed. Speed is linked to cost. We can help you with comfort, which is linked to experience. And we can help you with confidence. Right. And I will take you through a few steps to explain how this link can be established. When I talk about speed, one example, maybe you heard it already in the video, is something that we call Compress Sense, which is a hardware uh, algorithm combination, and Dr. Julie will talk about this as well, that gives you a reduction of scan time around 50%. And I often refer to productivity as a benefit, but I know as a patient, rather than spending 30 minutes in an MR, probably you would enjoy to only have 15 minutes on that same system. Right? So that's an example of what we can do to help with speed and productivity, managing cost. Now then, when I think about comfort, so this is patient experience, staff experience. And one example that I want to give you, and we did this in uh, Denmark, is creating a holistic patient experience environment. And some of that you saw in the video as well. 70% um, reduction of rescans, which I think is very important for you as well, your operation. But of course, it's also very important when you think about your patient. Now, on the last point on this slide, there are many ways to look at confidence. But if I was a patient, I would love to have the right diagnosis as soon as possible so that I can have a perfect treatment that helps me, maybe even yesterday. Now, one way to express that is have better images. And the technology that we will be talking about to you tonight uh, has a up to 60% better spatial resolution. Now, as a doctor, I'm sure you can immediately make the translation on the impact that will have for you. Now, having said this, trying to understand you trying to understand you as our customer, thinking about the triple A more the quadruple A, thinking about speed, comfort, and confidence. That is the way we have developed our next generation in MR. And I will take you quickly through 
the hardware side of this house. So end of last year, we introduced a product called Prediva. This is a 60 centimeter, 1.5 Tesla magnet. Um, I call it the huggable magnet because it has a very small footprint, very much a workhorse type of, uh, uh, of system um, that already we see get a, you know, a lot of traction also in this region. Then I think this was around March 1st at the European Conference of Radiology, we introduced our new 3T system. So this is of course all about gradient coil improvement. You saw that in the video as well. Uh, our new three uh, replacing our current Ingenia D-Stream uh, platform. And this, I think, was a little bit the teaser. I will talk about that a little bit more. Uh, this is our ambition. I would call this a, not only a first to Philips, I would call this a first to world. Totally new technology, disruptive technology. And when I think about sustainability and touching three billion lives, for me that goes hand in hand. Right, and everyone knows that we're running out of helium. And did you know that MR consumes 20% of the global supply of helium on an annual basis? So we have a huge impact, all of us together. And I think as a company, we also have a responsibility to make sure that commodities that are scarce, that we help manage that. And it's part of our sustainability profile. Now, I said to you, the previous slide was all about the hardware side, but I think we cannot help you around speed, comfort and confidence if we don't link it into solutions. So I just want to give you a couple of examples. One thing that you heard is what I would call touchless patient sensing. So we have optical technology in the bore that is able to manage and see your patient. And this is of course mainly true for breath health, but also for respiratory uh, uh, corrections. Right, so it means you don't need the respiratory belt, you get automatic motion correction uh, through this uh, technology. We call it Vital Eye. Now, when it comes to comfort, um, one example that I want to give you, and I have to say, um, some of the customers that I spoke to today also mentioned to me that if you're a patient and you're uncomfortable, you would like to know where you are in the exam. And we have auto voice, and auto voice is not only what it sounds like, my voice, telling you where we are, but it's also visual support. So I know exactly that I need to hold my breath for 15 seconds. And I have a visual that tells me when I'm at 5, 10 and approaching 15. Right? And we know from experience that 15 seconds means nothing. But 15 seconds with visual support and audio support really helps you to manage your breath hold. So I think it's a very important uh, development. Now, and when it comes to confidence, um, a conversation that we had today as well is about clinical decision support. So here we are next to being a continuous inventor of hardware, also a big investor in software. Making sure that we have the right algorithms, that we use data, and I don't want to use artificial intelligence too loosely. Uh, I think that's been done already quite a bit. But clinical decision support is very important. So uh, 3D APT is a neuro application that helps the surgeon to take decisions on do I need to act now or can I wait and see? And these are very important uh, developments. So the point that I want to leave with you is that it's not only about hardware, it is really about combining hardware, software, but at the same time for those that have a financial interest, uh, my experience from the region is that thinking about packaging this with the right service, maybe offering an operational lease off your balance sheet. Right? So it's really a combination that I recognize as being a big need in this, in this region. So that's why I wanted to take you through a few examples uh, on this slide. Now, of course, I will talk a little bit more about this new technology. Vincenzo said we call it ambition. It's a 1.5... Tesla, first to world. And I just have a few slides and then I think we need to go to Dr. Julie, who has not only this, this is a first to world technology, but he has the first in the world. Right? And he can tell you what this really does for his, uh, for his practice. So, 1500. You remember, Vincenzo said, remember one number, 1500. Right? It's not so difficult, 1500 liters of liquid helium currently sitting in your magnets. Now let me push the button. Okay. 
So in this, with this microcooling technology, this is the way we get to seven. Right? So we go from 1500 liters of liquid helium in the magnet today, and when this magnet leaves our fa factory, it's actually gas. But how do you keep that gas in the magnet? Now we do that by fully sealing the helium. So when it gets to your practice, it will be a liquid form. Because it's fully sealed, it cannot go anywhere. Right? And I will go to a few advantages of that. No helium can escape, therefore no refill is necessary. So your magnets are being refilled today if you have non-zero boil-off or zero boil-off, right? There will always be some leakage. Um, and of course, if there's an event, something gets stuck in the bore, and I've been told that 60% of the wider customer base experiences something getting stuck in the bore once every three years. So it's quite often when you think about it. Now, one thing that I know from the Middle East that there is a very active... Um, greenfield activity. So many of you are involved in building new facilities. Right? You're building facilities from the ground off. We, we need more hospitals still in the Middle East to make sure that we can uh, take care of the demand. What you don't need, if you don't have helium that needs to leave your, your, your uh, MR exam room, you don't need a vent pipe. You don't need to invest in construction. And that is what this picture uh, uh, says. Now, you can imagine I don't know exactly what your investment is in, uh, in your construction, but there is, of course, a big saving to be gained here. Another thing is that without, let's say, almost 1,500 liters of helium, you're also much lighter. I spoke to uh, the chair of radiology uh, from a big uh, um, academic institute in the US, in New York, saying, hey, I would like to have something on my 13th floor. What can I put there? I said, well, Maybe this is something that you can put there. Right? So this is one, op it opens all kinds of new sighting options as well. Now the last point that I want to make is, we call it adaptive intelligence. So you know that if you have a quench, uh, something gets stuck in the bore, you push the wrong button, you, you may have all your helium leaving your magnet and you will have a downtime of five to seven days. Right? I'm sure you recognize that. Now here we will manage this magnet remotely, so we will know what's going on. If something gets stuck in the bore, we are able to ramp down and ramp up your magnet overnight. So you leave with a magnet that's down in the evening and overnight, while hopefully you have a good sleep, we will ramp down, ramp up, and you'll be, you'll be back up in the morning. Right? So you can imagine that it has a big impact on your operation. Now the last point, um, this is where I need help, right? because now it's all about the performance. I've shared a little bit about the technology, I, t I talked about cost of ownership, operational cost, but of course the only thing that really counts for you as a radiology, uh, radiologist audience is how does this now work when we have a patient in the system. Now, and, uh, like I said, this technology is first in the world. Where I need help is from Dr. Julie, who has the first system in the world in his facility. So Dr. Julie, if you will want to join me on stage and tell a little bit about the performance. Thank you, Arim, for the nice introduction. And uh, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here to speak about our fascination that we, we really fall in love with the magnet. Um, can I have the slides, please? So we are a public-private uh, organization, uh, Spital Uste and MDZ, and uh, we uh, run a hospital radiology department, and we have two practices associated. The newest practices is Equipus and Ambition Next. It's me uh, with our lead radiographer, uh, Christina Altswart, and uh, I have no disclosures to make apart from that Philip sponsored once my work and uh, that I'm a speaker on behalf of Philips. So I'd like to give you an overview about what I'd like to speak to you about. Um, this, uh, these first two months of uh, working with Simbition is very exciting uh, because um, we uh, want to show you the first cardiac MR 
that we've done on the system. First clinical cardiac MR, and it's a very exciting examination because it was a 140 kilogram man. And we did an adenosine stress perfusion test. And that is a quite demanding and challenging examination at the best times. So um, then I'd like to show you a few points about why we chose the Ambition X uh, and uh, then about talk about uh, compressed sense, then what we learned about compressed sense, and uh, obviously we uh, want to see many images. So let's uh, move to the first case. 140 kilogram male who uh, was known to have uh, ischemic heart disease and uh, previous bypass grafts, had previous stents, and then after three months again developed chest pains. And my uh, colleague Ahmed Katab asked me, can you please have a look at this man and can you see if we have another need for an investigation? So uh, these are the very first images of a cardiac MR, of a clinical cardiac MR, and I show you real pictures. I don't want to show you PowerPoint slides too much. I want to show you DICOM images. So these are the original DICOM images anonymized to this patient. And you can see he had a little artifact from sternal wires. We've done this sequence. We adjusted a little bit to have anti-diastolic imaging next to the chest to get an overview of the anatomy. And so let me just fix my glasses. Um, then uh, we uh, moved on to cine imaging and we uh, developed the planes of, uh, of the heart and we uh, can play this and you can see high resolution cine imaging, uh, seven millimeter slide with an uh, in-plane resolution of 1.8 millimeters. So you can appreciate the valves, you can appreciate the ball motion, every single of that is pitch perfect. Um, and it has to be said, we set up the protocol with one of our radiographers, so that's a 65 kilogram woman and the next case we run is honestly this cardiac MR. Uh, we then see here there is no significant wall motion abnormality apart from the lateral wall isn't moving perfectly well. Um, from then onwards, we uh, then want to see what's the myocardial perfusion like under stress. So here we go. That's a 140 kilogram patient, and we are running a perfusion scan at a heart rate of 90 beats per minute. And we can see here apex, we can see here perfusion defect in the lateral wall, and here anterior wall also affected, so perfect imaging. We then move on to uh, looking at the viability of the, of, of the myocardium. And we want to see in these kind of images, we call them PSRR images. I'll just uh, switch this to uh, the right phase. There's basically three phases of images. This here is the mapped image. And you can see it's got a little scar here from a previous uh, event. But apart from that, it's got viable myocardium. So there's a clear cut indication for a stenting procedure uh, to uh, resolve his symptoms. And I've been told that uh, everything we said in the MR was pre pitch perfect. He received a stent and uh, he is now cured. So now why did we chose the Ambition X? People get larger and uh, so therefore the 70 centimeter bore is of huge uh, advantage to us and it also is a big asset for claustrophobic patients. Then the 55 centimeter field of view it's amazing. You have seen with your own eyes that this is, in big patients, an asset. Then trivial things like an improved mattress. Thank you, Philips, for, after so many years, now having a pretty perfect mattress. Combination with the inboard experience makes a huge difference in the compliance. Having somebody in a tube and uh, having to give them basalt commands, it is very helpful for the patient to see how long he has to hold his breath visually. No quench pipe. All of the uh, technical stuff Aaron has totally covered. But what I'd like to point out from a radiologist's point of view, this system has an amazing field homogeneity. And that is echoed through everything we do. Let me take you through a few things with compressed sense. So uh, Q-flow imaging. This usually takes uh, about 14 seconds to have obtain a flow image of the aorta. Now with compressed sense, we can break this down to uh, 6.7 seconds, so less than half. And on top of that, these are uh, data from 11 volunteers. All of this, uh, here these numbers, the front number always is uh, the, uh, the measurement of the, um, of the flow, and all these numbers match. So no matter how high we ramp up this compressed sense factor, 
the measurement stays accurate. So therefore, it's exceptionally useful because if somebody has difficulties holding his breath and you have to do a physiology uh, measurement, then it is important to have shortest possible breath hold times. Cine imaging. It's also absolutely amazing. You can shorten a breath hold to even 3.2 seconds, and uh, we can combine these techniques by uh, doing an entire left ventricle with two breath holds. Let's go through this quickly that we have more time with the uh, cases. We then have uh, stir imaging, for example. It's 40% shorter than with conventional sense imaging. That also makes a huge difference, for example, diagnosing patients with myocarditis, uh, which is quite a common uh, question we'll get asked uh, with cardiac MR. Then the new kid on the block, the Molly sequence. Here, this is a new way of assessing the myocardium without contrast. We know that gadolinium should be avoided if we can, because uh, in, if you inject it more often into the patient, it starts to accumulate in the brain and bones. So therefore, we're looking at ways of how to make a diagnosis without contrast. And therefore, a molly sequence that we use to assess the heart muscle is a very important tool to us. Now here, what you see here is the shot duration. The shot duration you can shorten significantly, and therefore you can better images that have less artifacts. Let's skip through the high-resolution cine imaging if we have the time later, and I'll get back to this. First cardiac tumor, exceptionally rare entity that we had uh, been asked to look at by our clinical colleagues. Again, let me take you through the original DICOM images. So that woman had presented with uh, acute chest pain in the A&E department, 67 years. She then uh, was uh, admitted, and uh, our colleagues uh, had asked us to do a CTPA. That is an examination where we look at the lungs and the, the arteries of the uh, supplying the, the lungs and uh, oxygenating the blood. And that's where we found that uh, this uh, woman had no pulmonary embolus, as initially suspected, but she had this here, a large tumor pushing the heart forward and compressing the right ventricle and the right inflow tract. Now, with our anatomical imaging, okay, we get some, somewhere. What we then want to know when we assess a, a lesion like that with MR, we want to know if it doesn't infiltrate the heart itself, can we take it out? And this year is something I've never been able to do. I've been doing cardiac MR since 20 years, but this year is for me absolutely astonishing. We have four millimeter slice thickness and 1.3 millimeter in plane resolution with 34 heart phases. And you can see here, that little dot here is the right coronary artery. And you can see here the right coronary artery uh, behind the heart. And it suddenly then uh, comes here as a, as a line. And that moves. The right coronary artery moves all the time. So it's not stuck in the tumor. So it's actually a structure that is can be moved away from the heart, so it's an operable situation. And then you want to tissue characterize this problem. And the way you tissue characterize this problem was, uh, let's go straight to where the meat is, let's do, uh, have a look at uh, the um, rest perfusion. So we look at how contrast gets into this lesion during a time-resolved scan. And you can see in the center of the lesion, there's sort of a star-shaped uh, area where uh, you have contrast pooling. And that's interesting. So it has a cavernous part. Then we take images that look at uh, the signal properties uh, of, the, uh, of the myocardium itself uh, and of the, of the tumor itself. You saw seen that earlier, that was the so-called stir image. And in the stir image, you see this thing lights up. We call that a light bulb phenomenon. And so it's already an indication we have a uh, tumor with central cavernous parts, and it lights, uh, shows a light bulb sign. So it's very suggestive of a hemangioma. And uh, to put the icing on the cake, as they say in England, uh, we then take images after contrast, after four minutes. And uh, here is uh, this, uh, this image after contrast. Um, it's a whole stack through it. And you see this nodular enhancement of that lesion. And then after 20 minutes, we can take uh, another picture. And because we have to wait for this kind of assessment then, uh, because the patient and the condition requires it, so you have to be flexible in your scanning protocol a little bit. And you see it already fills up, but in the center part, it has got a central space where no contrast is, is seen. So therefore, this is a pericardial hemangioma. Can be resected. Patient is currently awaiting surgery. Uh, I'm unfortunately not able to show the pictures yet because uh, it's probably happening next week. Um, another difficult 
situation for us diagnostically. Myocarditis was something else. So uh, we have a uh, about 60-year-old woman, again, with an acute uh, onset of chest pain and normal coronary arteries and coronary CT, good left ventricular function, the CPK, troponin, all the cardiac enzymes are normal, and also the inflammatory markers like the CRP, normal. We did, again, cardiac MR, because our clinical colleagues asked us, they have seen in an echo a motion pattern of the left ventricle that is uh, related to a condition called Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. And that is one of the main differential diagnoses of myocarditis. So how do you differentiate that? Again, we take our axial images through the chest. Oops, this is uh, unfortunately not the right case. Um, yeah. So, uh, but here you can see that the, uh, the ventricle is slightly ballooned here. You can see that in the STIR image, we have uh, a uh, marked increase in uh, signal, and we have also marked increase in signal in the tip of the ventricle here in the apex. If you do mapping on that, we can see the abnormality, significant abnormality here in the native T1 map, in the contrast, post-contrast image that's also appreciated, and we can see in the post-GAT study that there is contrast enhancement. The T2 map uh, that we also have obtained shows that there is a signal intensity of 85 milliseconds of the affected parts of the myocardium, which means this is highly suggestive of an uh, inflammatory process. So our differential diagnosis here is Takotsubo cardiomyopathy with late gadolinium enhancement, and uh, that's the end of my case presentation. So in summary, for us, having the ambition X has been, every promise has been delivered to us, and uh, we love it as a clinical tool, and we find it exceptionally useful in delivering good cardiac MR uh, to our patient. But it goes far beyond cardiac MR. We have excellent experience with neuroimaging. We do 3D knee imaging now with the ambition X, and probably shouldn't say that, but it, it almost looks like a 3T from, uh, for, for our orthopedic radiologist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Julie. Um, I think on me, it came across as very convincing. So let's see, uh, we have a little bit of time. Uh, I have a question for you, uh, but of course, we would also like to hear your questions. So in the audience, don't hesitate. Uh, and of course, we have an audience online. So I, I have someone telling me if the questions online are coming in. But maybe let me, uh, let me start with something I think relatively simple. Uh, you talked about a difficult patient, different uh, um, cardiac patient uh, for compressed sense. Right? And I think one of the things that the audience may want to know, is this now only for cardiac where you can use compressed sense or is there a wider application that you see? We uh, have an enormous scope for compressed sense. We use compressed sense extensively in the, for imaging the brain. We use in our scanning protocols a lot of 3D sequences like 3D flare, uh, T1 post contrast, and uh, the uh, SWIP sequence to assess any uh, evidence of any previous bleed, which is about six times more sensitive than just a uh, T2 star sequence. And we have seen that the uh, compressed sense is reducing the acquisition times which was previously, for some scans, five minutes down to three minutes. And that, if you add that up through in a study, you very quickly shape off six, seven minutes of the time it takes to uh, have uh, the study obtained. But it also increases the compliance of the patient, because the less you have to have them in the magnet, the shorter you can make the examination time, the better for the patient. Have you already been able to quantify, maybe saying this is one patient extra per day, or? Because we've seen different data sets, is that something that uh, you've experienced as well? We are not at that stage yet, because in Switzerland we have a very particular situation. If you draw a, la a circle around uh, Zurich at a diameter of 20 kilometers, we have 70 magnets in that circle. So there's a huge competition between radiology departments and uh, providers, and so therefore we get uh, judged by image quality and quality of our reports. So our competitive advantage now with the Ambition X is to have an inbo experience system and to have amazing pictures. I think uh, knowing this market, knowing uh, this region, uh, this kind of competitiveness, I think is also very reflective of what you experience every day. A lot of competition. Uh, so I think that uh, maybe people had not expected that in Zurich, 
it would be at that level. So I think I'm, I'm sure that appeals to the audience here. You were, I think, jokingly saying, Philips, thank you for finally making a mattress yes, that and works. And it sounds I, trivial. And, and <laughs> I, I was in Cincinnati, which is the number two uh, children's hospital in North America, as you may know. And I said, what do you like about, in this case, our elision? And they said, we like your mattress. <laughs> right? So it's, my question is that it seems that something so trivial as a mattress is really having a big, big impact on patient experience. Yes. Right? So could you maybe talk a little bit more about it? We have the same comments that uh, that the patients say, oh, this time uh, I had an MR before, this time it was really comfortable. And having the patient comfortable in a wider bore magnet makes a huge difference. Okay. Um, maybe one, one question, and, and, and then I, I look around as well to see if there's more here. Um, maybe let's take a peek into the future. Right? You, you talked about diagnostic confidence. Um, you talked about uh, you know doing something very different, difficult, something that's never done, been done before with, with stress, uh, stress test, mm -hmm. with an obese uh, patient. Um, it reminded me because we spoke before of the discussion around precision medicine. Mm -hmm. right? So, so do you see a relationship where these kind of developments can help us more towards precision medicine? From my point of view, absolutely. Uh, in 2012, I've been to, uh, to the Stoller course in San Francisco, and uh, this was the first time I had uh, seen anatomical dissection with radiological images and atroscopy presented in the same teaching session. And uh, we had expert uh, knee surgeons that also talked about uh, the anterior and posterior bundle of the cruciate ligament. And we yesterday have taken because I arrived in Dubai actually this morning, uh, in the middle of the night, uh, and the day before, we have taken our 3T system, a new software release, and uh, with that software release, we can run compressed sense on our 3T, and we are now running a 3D knee with 0.5 millimeters isotropic voxels. So MR, as far as the data is concerned, as far as the reporting is concerned, uh, as a radiologist, turns into CT. So the way we do things will change. We now do a PD fat set 3D, and we do a T1 2D sequence coronal for the knee. We're done and dusted. And we have images that totally excite our clinical colleagues. I think my takeaway is that you know, with technological advancements and the translation that you make for patients, we're, we're, we're able to take uh, a big step forward towards our long-term goals in healthcare. So I think that's, that's great. Um, now, I know that uh, no questions online. Uh, I think here, when I look at the audience, I don't see any hands. So what I want, ah, we have a... Just, just yeah? a small question regarding the business view of this new technology. I mean, uh, as a business owner, if I have a, an old MR, I can do upgrade. I keep the magnet and do all the uh, shield, replacement, I have a brand new MR, and that can boost me for seven or 10 years ahead. Would I make this, would, would I, may I apply this technology, the seven liters uh, helium and the old magnet, or it should be brand new magnet with all the software? I mean, is it upgradable from old system, or this is just it have to be brand new. Yeah. So let me repeat the question. Right. So for the audience, I think you said, you know, from a business perspective, hey, eh, you, you say I take a business perspective. Um, I may have just installed a magnet, right? So you did your investment, and you're now saying, can I upgrade to this new technology? Right. So that's is is it fair your question? Right. I leave it up to you, uh, Dr. Julie. But let me say. Yes. Um, it's a totally new te technology, and that means that the magnet is a totally different. Uh, so I think the reality is it would be a new system. I love that idea. We call it a forklift upgrade. I did that actually in 2011. We took that decision at uh, Cantonal Hospital in Münsterlingen, and uh, I showed them what they could do on their 1.5T older magnet, was an Intera upgraded. And then I said, okay, if we now go for the engineer technology, a digital chain in, in the signal, uh, then we definitely have much better imaging and uh, they serve a large cardiac unit. It was a worthwhile investment. So the advice was followed. I think what uh, maybe just to add, you know, I think in the MR business, and I'm new to the MR business, I think we have a big reputation of protecting your investment. 
And I think you gave one example with yeah. a forklift upgrade, but also an uptrade. We have SmartPath for DStream, as you know. Uh, so this is, I think, a business where we are, want to think along. Your question today has the answer that I gave you, right? But our promise to you is also that we keep thinking along to protecting your investments going forward. I mean, in my relationship with, with Philips over 20 years now, what I found was that the technology was upgradable. Obviously, now you have uh, a disruptive new technology. This is a real game changer. And uh, so I'm totally sympathetic with you when you say, yeah, we're going to have to uh, invest then into this kind of technology. But I'm sure ways can be found for this. Yeah, I'm not standing further away from you because we have a problem. We have the interface. It's an interface with know. audio. So I was almost falling off the stage. <laughs> yeah. And I think here I have a little more room to maneuver. So we have one question that came in uh, via the live stream. It's a little bit building on my first question, but yeah. why not? Okay. Um, the question is, any new developments on arrhythmic patients? Right? And then the question is also, can compressed sense be used on other body parts? So I think that builds a little bit, but yeah. maybe on the arrhythmic uh, patient. With, uh, with arrhythmia, uh, we have seen a significant upgrade of the EC gating uh, technology. Uh, vector ECG was uh, proprietary to Philips magnets for many years, and then uh, the patent ran out. And then we uh, been given additional enhancement, uh, like calibration of the EC ECG signal. Now, with arrhythmic patients these days, we have actually software algorithms as part of the acquisition that really can, uh, can compensate for that. But what we also have, and that is also very exciting, is a technology called uh, KT Sense. And here you have actually, you don't need an ECG signal because it's such fast imaging. You can actually do left ventricular function and other cine images by just having the patient to hold his breath, and the gating is uh, done uh, via the software. Okay. Now let me look around. Um, now then, uh, I think, Dr. Julie, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for coming to Dubai. I know it's your first time here. Yes, right, so it's I'll also, be back. Uh, so that's a great promise. Um, thank you. I think you've, you've shared a lot. We did a quick Q&A here to maybe even adding to what you already said. Now I know that there are more questions in the audience. Um, so we have a little bit more excitement uh, to follow, but I know you're going to be around. And uh, I would invite everyone to not hesitate and come up. Uh, I can help you, everyone from Philips can help you to find Dr. Julie uh, for some more details. So if you want to see the magnet live, you're very welcome. Well, well welcome to Turi. Uh, so that's a great invitation, I would say. <laughs> it's hard to deny that one. Now, thank you very much. You. And we go to Vincenzo. Okay, here I am back. Uh, thanks a lot, Arjen. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Dr. Julie. Very clear, very inspiring. At the beginning of the, of the presentation, I told you to remember these two numbers. Now it's a bit more clear why. And I think also, uh, maybe re reflecting on that, still these numbers are important. Huh? And all the presentation about the technology and how it works and what can brings, I think is very important. But I think what it does in the end, and the benefit, and what it does for the patient, for the staff, for you as a radiologist, is what really matters. So now I, I ask you to bring the numbers a bit back and think a lot more about what this innovation can really bring to the patient. I think it's a really a next step forward towards responding to the quadruple aim. So getting to better outcomes with lower cost and with better experience for patients and for staff. But now is the moment, the moment that we are going to reveal the ambition. But ambition is not here. Yeah, and despite it's very light, I think it will be quite difficult to bring it here so quickly. So that's why I need some help. I need some magic. And I will ask Shane, our magician, to join me on stage. slogan, there's always a way to make life better. I'm sure many of you have heard that. And that is exactly what was in our minds 
when we targeted and tried to solve this MRI problem. The biggest problem that we faced was the huge amounts of helium used or needed to operate an MRI machine. As it was mentioned, the number was 1,500, 1,500 liters. Now, there were many difficulties at hand to solving this problem. Each one bigger than the next. A lot of obstacles were faced. But Phyllis had the ingredients, the key ingredients to solving this. Each one of those problems shown by a piece of broken string. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is this. What Philips used is innovation, creativity, ingenuity, and of course, hard work to put these pieces back and cause the impossible. Now, of course, without the impossible, these pieces will still be separate pieces. Unless, Woo. there you go. Unless those key ingredients are spoken for. Now, to me, this is an effect. But Philips has really created the impossible, only using seven liters, almost four of these balloons, to run a machine that used to use 1,500 liters. Now, I would love to ask for Mr. Vincenzo to show you our augmented reality on the subject. Thank you very much, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Shane. Thank you. So now we'll bring the ambition to life. And again, we will use a bit of magic. Yeah, to do it live at the opera. So stay with me. Okay, tell me if I'm stable. Yes, now is the moment. And the ambition is here with you. Ooh. Yeah, how does it look like? But maybe you went to have a better look to the coil and to the helium part, and here it is. So we move a bit. You can see how the helium is positioned. OK, so this is the ambition. And I'm very proud that I was able to show it to you. Actually, we have not brought this live in the opera because we don't want to use the opportunity to one of you to be the first to have this in the Middle East, and hopefully many more. I think now we are really come to the conclusion. It's time to start our dinner together. I would like really to thank you for coming here so in a big crowd. And yeah, I understand from the, the signals that I have to call the magician back. Yeah, OK. But to explain a few things, yeah? Exactly right. Because, yeah, yeah, let me finish now. So what I've showed here, what I showed here, now you can also do at your table. Yeah? Bring the ambition live. But you need to do something to get to this. Okay, so what you'll notice, uh, hopefully I can project my voice because the mic is not working at the moment. You'll notice that in front of each table, well, in the middle of each table, there is a tablet. On top of that tablet, there is a card. So can everybody, can one in each table, a, a person in each table, please take the tablet in the middle of the table? Can everybody do that for me, please? One person on each table takes a tablet. I love how you just scratch that off of the table. Great. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Each one of these tablets are going to allow you to go into this augmented reality and really get a feel for the technology that we use. However, what you might notice that before you can get into those tablets, there's a password. Did anybody see that? Yes. There's a password, correct? Yeah. Good. Now, I'm going to ask one person to help me out. Uh, sir, I love how you're sitting for the video I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, if you don't mind, sir, what is your good name? Fahad. Do you mind joining me on this? Fahad, a big round of applause for Mr. Fahad. <laughs> now, Mr. Fahad, we have never met before. It seems happy about that. <laughs> okay, great. Please, right over here. Great. Now, for this one, you have to be the same distance away from me as I am from you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A lot of people have passed by. Okay. Now, here's the deal. It's about it. If somebody tries to get into those tablets, it would be the next thing possible. Because what I did before 
this whole event started, is I put a password on it. Specifically, there are seven digits that would open this tablet that is in your hands. Yes? Now, sir, do you mind trying a seven digit password on that tablet? Please. And press OK when you're done. Did it work? It would have been good, though. <laughs> All right? Now, here's what's going to happen. I want numbers to be created through intuition. I'm going to ask you to pick the people that will do this. I noticed you have a phone on you, is that correct? Mm -hmm. You have a phone on you, like a smartphone or an iPhone, something with a calculator. Perfect. Open the phone and open the calculator. Great. Now, we have the calculator screen right over here. Here's what's going to happen. I want you to pick four people from you. Now, please, if he points at you, do not act invisible <laughs> because everybody else can still see you, okay? <laughs> So, Mr. So Bahad, you please take a step forward. Point to one of the lovely gentlemen on this side of the room. This lovely gentleman, you knew that you were going to get chosen. <laughs> okay. Great, please stand up, sir. Uh, can you please point to a second person on this side of the room? I'm going to come to your right. Go ahead. Oh, you, you can still stand up, but you can put the, lap, the, the iPad down. Great. We need two more females, because you know they say females are more intuitive. You've heard that before, haven't you? Yes? Great. So please, two females. Please stand up. And we need one more. I love how you get all their names. <laughs> It, it really it, it really looks like we set this up. Okay. So here's the deal. This is your calculator. You have chosen four people at random. Has everything been fair so far? Everybody together. Has everything been fair so far so, so good? Yes? yes? Perfect. I'm gonna ask you, Nina was it? Nina. We'll call you Nina, sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Lena, please name a two-digit number for me. Uh, 77. 77. Can you put 77 here, please? Just 77. Great. Can you click times? Just in time, good. Uh, what's your big name then? Aisha. Aisha, any two digit number? Uh, 55. 55. Now, notice this. As soon as 5 comes as the last digit, the sum, or sorry, the multiplication, is either going to be a 0 or a 5. Agreed? Yeah. Good. Times? A two digit number? 33. Everybody's just repeating that. <laughs> Great. Good times. Now I need you to, to think of a single think of a single digit. Four times no, no, times. Now put in, put in uh, let's go for another single digit number. Go ahead. Okay. Now I want you to press equal and tell me the numbers that come up. Okay? Tell them to me one by one out loud. Five. Five. Zero one. So slowly. <laughs> Zero. Sorry. One. one. Seven. Seven. One. One. Four. Four. Zero. Zero. Yes? Correct? Yeah. Guys, yeah. I want you to try the numbers on your iPad. Please pick up your iPad and try those numbers. It's five. <laughs> Inspired you in many ways. Magic. 
rational, and what we can do together, enjoy. It's time to engage, ask questions, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks a lot.